the Tim Heal Thirsty Thursday live stream from 7 until 9 weekly. Here's your host, Tim Heal. Now then, let's bring my next guest in. Now this young fella, uh, he was in uh, <laughs> he was in Berlin with us a few moons ago and uh, when he when he left the, the army, he went as a firefighter. But not just any old firefighter. He went as a firefighter in Germany. Now he's seen an awful lot of. Um, he's had to deal with a lot of people that have done it. So, Tim, boom, you're in the room. <laughs> Good evening, mate. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad, mate. You all right? Yeah. Thanks for joining us. How? Yeah. How's it going? Yeah, lovely, lovely. Keeping busy, keeping healthy. Yeah, that's the main thing, isn't it? That's yeah. it. I mean, looking forward to retiring anytime soon. Well, a couple of years yet. A couple of years yet. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Just can't get enough. <laughs> so we had yeah. a, a chat a, a, a while ago about um, some of the stuff that you've seen, um, particularly as a firefighter. Um, yeah, going out yeah. on calls, finding people in 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 sorry states of affairs. So, yeah, how does that how does that affect you as a firefighter and your colleagues when you have to go out to that um, type of shout? It is quite uh, quite stressy, and um, mind when you get called out, especially when you get called out to. Uh, one example, we got called out to a, a car accident, uh, arriving at the scene. One of the firemen collapsed, <laughs> uh, fainted, and uh, we knew why. It was his daughter's car, and it crashed in the back of a lorry and uh, beheaded the young girl. And uh, altogether, there were three of them in the car, three young girls, and uh, they were all dead. Uh, yeah. A couple of weeks later, we found him in his in his garage. He he dumped himself. It was one just one accident too much for him, you know. So it is quite stressful, and uh, we do have um, we have a, a lot of assistance. You know, um, we have our um, people we can go to the quack and everything, and have a good chat and pour our hearts out. But uh, it comes with a job, so you know. Mm. Uh, we've had quite I mean, a few. Yeah, how much support do you actually get on a sort of, uh, say, a daily day, day to day basis? Because um, uh, firefighters, I mean, they just don't go out fighting fires. I mean, they they go out to traffic road accidents. They go out to to the cats stuck up trees, and 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 they also go out to to a lot of horrific scenes. How yeah. how how do they do it in Germany, for instance? Um, do you have regular trim meetings or, or regular counselling um, that you get? How's that work? Yeah, we have we have regular counselling. Uh, we can get extra counselling uh, if we've been to an accident or a fire where there's there's actually casualties or, or people dead. Um, I'm actually a uh, paramedic with the fire brigade. Um, I'm just doing my refresher course now. Um, and obviously we get there on the scene before most of the um, other medics get there. And we have to look after the, uh, you know, we have to do with it, fight the scene best we can, so to say. Um, we do have quite a lot of um, people break down, can't take it, or, you know, it helps having been in the army and uh, been through some of the things we've been through. Um, that does help quite a lot. So, uh, born head banger, you know. <laughs> um, I can put it. I can put it in the back of my head. And, but a lot of the young people, they can't. And uh, we have counselling afterwards. You know, we can come in off a, a firefight and we get counsel straight away. So um, obviously, it does help a lot. Mm. Talking about things, getting out of your system, you know. Yeah. Instead of bottling it. Do, do, do you get? Because I guess it, the 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 German fire brigade works similar to the the British fire brigade, where they've got watches and um, you, you all muck yeah, us together in, in one particular watch. Um, 
And, and do you get the opportunity to all sit around and talk about stuff that you've done out uh, on shouts you've been on, or is yeah, it commonplace to, to talk we about that. it? We have we have a monthly meeting where all, all the groups get together, apart from obviously one that's on duty. They're in the meeting as well, but um, uh, um, obviously if they get called out, they break it off and go out. But um, we do get together now and again, at least once a month, have a chat and get things out of the system, you know. Um, I've been to quite a few where, you know, burnt bodies in the building. Um, I was the breathing on the breathing apparatus, so uh, it's obviously first in last out and uh, we did get quite a few um <laughs> quite a few um serious incidents where you know bodies on scene mm. burnt stiff uh a lot of suicides and a lot of non-suicides so you know we get a bit of a mix all through through the system sort of thing the worst mm. things are you know the worst things are the suicides we obviously car accidents things like that yeah <laughs> you live with that but the suicides are the hard ones, you know, because you know somebody's, they've not been able to talk. They've just gone in the woods and we've had a few in the woods. Yeah. They've set fire to their own car, sat in it, or we've had some, they've hung themselves. One of the worst ones was a 13 year old lad. He'd been bullied at school. Mm. Um, got called out by his, I think it was his stepmother, got called out and um, she said, oh, he's up there. I can't get him down. And he, he'd hung himself. He tried it once with a rope. <laughs> She'd obviously could they go edge cutters. She cut the cut the rope. Uh, about a week later, he hung himself with a bicycle chain, and mm. no way of cutting that. So um, he found a way, and he did it. Um, yeah, I think I think the, the determined person that's going to take their own life um, will take it, regardless of of. <laughs> what sort of interventions are put in place what sort of um yeah. it's it's the ones that are unsuccessful uh are really looking That's for it. help and I think this is something that we've covered before it, yeah uh, and, I, and i think that cry for help if if you know somebody that's that is vulnerable is susceptible and they 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 call out then whatever you're doing drop it Make the time yeah. for that person. Sometimes yeah, all it takes is to use these instead of this and just to listen to yeah. them vent off. And and generally exactly. they'll, 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 they'll be okay. And, and and once once you've listened to them, then point them in the direction of some professional help, of which there is a ton of it out there. It's easy to find help. I, um, definitely. It's no different I, here. It's the same over here. There was yeah. a, I mean, obviously the Germans, uh, they didn't have a lot of action after the war, you know. Um, but it's, uh, I think it's since um, Kosovo and uh, Yugoslavia, they've been allowed mm. in the war zones again as, as a yeah. military. Before that, they were only a, a, for a known defence, a Bundeswehr, which was known defence. Yeah. And now, you know, now they've got a volunteer army. They don't, they don't get conscripted anymore. Um, and. They actually go where we go. They've been, I think, Kabul. Everything was in Kabul as well uh, in Yugoslavia. Yeah, Sarajevo. You no, know, they, they tend to go everywhere now, and um, <laughs> they obviously yeah. need their help as well. We've had a lot of uh, over here um, ex-German army guys that have um, <laughs> cracked up, need to talk, and uh, you know, you, you just sit down, you take the time, and you chat, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. That's the best help. Well, I so, so I worked with the Germans in uh, in Kabul in two thousand two thousand two. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, they 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 got slightly. I think that was one of the first operations that they were on. I mean, they they were they were in Kosovo. Yeah, we had them in Kosovo, but not in great numbers. But I think they they sent out a battle group to Kabul in two thousand and two, and and I worked with their Ops Info Battalion. And um, and they've got a funny story about the Ops of <laughs> Battalion. Um, <laughs> we visited them in the Dar Daring Castle, um, and just on the sort of the west side of Germany, uh, sort of sort of sort of slightly southwest. And um, we we went out there. A small team went out to to, to have a chat with them and, and see some demonstrations. And uh, they were showing that these these balloon leaflet bombs that they 
they were using. I mean, we were using them in the Second yeah. World War, but they they were demonstrating this this leaflet bomb, and and we, the, the guy was telling us how, how they packed it and all the rest of it, and they sent this balloon up over this sort of training area, and all of a sudden, poof, and all these leaflets came tumbling down, <laughs> and uh, my my boss turns turns to this the the, the guy that's giving us uh, talking about the demonstration. He says, um, "What have we got on this afternoon?" Well, the the chaps have got litter picking. <laughs> so, so, so the the the, the lads are, are all going to pick it up all this paper that they dropped. <laughs> so I thought that was that, that's the way the Germans operate. I mean, but yeah. it was it was quite interesting the way that they operate their ops info. It's mainly directed at their own troops rather than um, a local yeah. target audience that exactly. we were targeting. So. That was that was interesting to see the, their first operational mm. tour, as it were. Um, but coming back to um, suicide awareness, I mean, it, there's there's a lot of help out there. I mean, the Samaritans number, if anybody doesn't know it, it's one one six one two three, and you can call that twenty four hours a day. Um, if you're feeling a little bit down in the dumps, if you're feeling a bit um, a bit tearful, or whatever, and you just need somebody to listen. One one six yeah. one two three, um, and I'm sure they've got similar in Germany. They've got the same, similar in uh, in in America. Pretty much the Western <coughs> world has got some some form of help. Yeah, well, we are we actually have when we when we do get called out to a, a fatal accident or um, somewhere where we know. Uh, there's a person in the house still, or missing person in in the house, or um, we take out what they call a sales order, which is a psychiatrist, basically a psychiatrist, a, a psychologist, mm. <laughs> and he'll come out. And it's it's mainly it's either a padre or something like that, a uh, German padre. And they'll come mm. out and they'll chat to the people who are uh, obviously they'll chat to the people, the firemen who have been in there, but they'll also chat to the the family people who have just lost somebody. You know? So yeah. they'll actually get a group of them straight there for on the scene, you know, which is good. And that, That's they, great. They, they come out nearly every case they come out with us. So That's really good. Um, I mean, I don't think we have that here. Certainly, I've, I've not heard uh, of, of that sort of person going out with the, the fire service or the ambulance service um, no. or the police service. Um, I, I don't know how much help that our emergency services get. Um, and certainly when when we when I've been on operations, um, there are um, dedicated trim teams or, or guys no. identified as trim practitioners and trim coordinators that will go and um, assist when something's uh, yeah. when, when there's, there's been an incident um, and they'll go in and, and they'll make the assessment uh, and they'll make the reports and then they'll go back and do the follow-ups. Um, when you are in conflict, it's quite difficult to be able to keep up with it sometimes because if, yeah. if, if you're in a forward operating base or you're in a patrol base and you're being contacted on a daily basis, it, it becomes, you kind of get numb to it. Um, and it's not until you're out of it and you, you start thinking back, um, that's when it starts playing on your mind. When you're actually in, in the game and, and, and you're just in there doing a the job and it's, it's just that it's you. You're in. You're in amongst it. You. That's what you've been trained for, and that's what you expect. Yeah. And I guess it's the same with the the emergency services because they're on the front line all the time, and every day yeah. they they could be uh, in, in something horrific every single day. Um, and I'm yeah, sure it happens. Nice. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Periods of time couple, where. Couple of <laughs> Yeah, as a, I yeah. mean, a couple of months ago, we, we actually a couple of months ago we lost two two young guys. They'd only just they'd only been in the brigade about a year, and we lost them. They got cut off in 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 the house. They got cut off from the rest of the troop, and uh, um, they burnt in the house. You know, and uh, that plays a lot. It does play a lot on your mind. 
you know, having lost two guys and <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you always think you always take that with you when you go out to the next call. You know, it, it could be my last call. You know yeah. that, but you do it anyway. It's it's a job. Yeah. And I guess that 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 makes life really difficult, particularly on the commander uh, who was who was commanding yeah, the, the fire, um, and and the colleagues. Um, how how they that that must have a play on how they left the two guys behind. I mean that without that, that, yeah, well, it that's gonna, wasn't that's so much left behind. Uh, yeah, they they were young. They went a bit too far. They went. They went a bit too far in. They had no comms, and uh, the roof fell. <laughs> you know, the ceiling collapsed. Yeah, because it had been burning a little while, and uh, there was a yeah. missing person in the house. So they'd obviously gone in on their own, on their own uh, accord. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it just, it, you know, it's it's the sort of thing you do when you've not got when you've got unexperienced. I always try because I, I I'm actually one of the um, team leaders. I, I actually try when I've got a team up there to send an experienced guy with an unexperienced guy, which it helps. Yeah. But, uh, in this it, case, it must help because you, you, you've, you've always experience. got that that experience. Um, yeah, exactly. Sometimes it's not always possible, but um, as as far as you can, you're always trying to send somebody with experience yeah. in uh, to somebody that. That's, yeah, of course. I mean, because they they've all gone through the same sort of training, but it's 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 where they've got the training from. It's it's what stage they are in their career. So you've got a, a young guy that's just starting out working with an older fellow that's yeah. mentoring him. It works wonders. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So you get to see quite a lot of um, horrific stuff, and 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 they deal with it. Um, there and then, yeah. so, and, and I guess you're constantly assessed all the time. Um, just yeah, given you, that you, know, you, you have your mental assessments that as well. And if you if you fail them, that's it. We have our physical tests, we have our mental tests, and everything. At least I, <laughs> I have to do my physical test every year because I'm over fifty, I'm over sixty now. But uh, I have to, <laughs> uh, after club. 50, do it. Yeah, up until fifty, it's every three years, and after fifty, it's every year. Yeah. So you know, it's, you're constantly being assessed, and uh, you you feel that you're out. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it's it's you, you are you're being assessed every time when you're out. Somebody always got their eye on you, <laughs> you know. Mm. And it's the best way, really, because if you're not stable, then uh, you shouldn't be there. Yeah. Well, I mean, if because you're a threat, you're not really a threat to yourself. You're a threat to your colleagues, threat to others. Yeah, and lastly, yeah, you want exactly. is, is to be responsible for your mate's death. Um, exactly. When it could have been prevented because you weren't in the right frame of mind. Yeah, exactly. So, so the Germans have kind of got it right on that front, then. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm. So it'd be interesting to get uh, the experience from from our side of the water um, yeah, to see. Yeah. That might be a follow-up for this one to see. Um, I'll, I'll have a word. Cause I've got a few friends uh, around the, the bazaars, shall we say, um, uh, and see how, how they have it's tackled in this country. So it's really yeah. fascinating stuff. So what was, what's been your best experience of, um, being in the German uh, firefighting service? Um, the challenge. <laughs> the challenge <laughs> to, uh, obviously, to make it in a different country with a foreign language. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm now, uh, well, I said team leader. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually watch leader and uh, station manager. So uh, we've got 16 engines. And I'm the first foreigner to uh, have such a job. Have such a nice job. So it, obviously, it's a yeah, it's a great experience and an honour, really. Yeah, you know, and that's once a poacher, always a poacher. Show them away, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Lead the way. We always have done. So, <laughs> so you got <laughs> into grips with a German then? Yeah, of course. German and Danish. Yeah. I'm on. I'm actually on the. I'm actually on the day. Danish boarding scene. So we, we worked yeah. together with the Danish family as well. 
I mean, that's good. I mean, yeah. Yeah, what's we your have, experience, we man? Like, an over, we have a, like an over-the-border friendship. Um, obviously, here in Europe, the borders have actually fell now. We have Before, they used mm. to get the old, you know, used to see on the films where they put the, the barriers down and yeah. things like that. Barriers are open now. There's no, there is no barriers. Yeah. So um, before we used, to, we used to have a barrier key, and it, yeah, I remember it used to be in the station. It used to hang in, it used to hang in that key cup in the station. Yeah. And if we got called out or fire in uh, Tonda in Denmark, um, we used to you know take the key out with us, open the open the uh, the barrier, go through, shut the barrier, and do the job. <laughs> um, Nowadays, we just drive over. The funny thing was, before when the border was there, some of the lads used to misuse it as well. Oh, we'll get some cheap beers across in Denmark, you know, import them <laughs> back into Germany. We don't, pay, we don't have to pay the deposit on the on the, on the the tins like you do in Germany. So you used to go across, you know, I'll oh, get the key. Get the key. Yeah, anyway, they, they found out because one, one time, you know, the fire alarm went off and, oh, where's the, where's the blue key? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the advice. Dance party's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> we had about six, six, six pallets of beer in the, in the back of the in the back of the truck. Like, oh, that's a misuse of you know. Ah, but it, like I say, yeah. now you know. It's... Yeah, it's all open. I can remember the days of going up through um, Padburg and uh, Flensburg, um, having to do the customs the check the way through. You know. Yeah. yeah. All fun and games, but so, it, it's it's like over here. It's you know, it's you're on the border, so uh, be. Well, your internet's playing up a little bit. So his internet's playing up a little bit. <laughs> so it's yeah. back. Well, the most the most most of the Danes I know, if they can't speak German, which normally on the border they learn German. The ones that can't speak yeah. German speak very good English, so <laughs> I've cracked it. The thing yeah. is, is the Danes are like the Danes are like the Dutch. All their fern, all yeah. their uh, t- fans, I'm talking German again. All their TV programs, I think that they're not like it in in Germany. That everything's in German is dubbed, but in Holland yeah. and in in in, uh, in Denmark, yeah. they have the subtitles. Subtitles, and it's yeah. in the original language, and it's in the original language, and they get that from when they're little, you know. So most of them speak English anyway. Yeah, which is which is yeah, I mean, oh my British is nice. friend, my British friend, come and have a beer. <laughs> yeah, so great. it does does make it difficult for us to learn diff, uh, foreign languages. Yeah. So, but I mean, you've done extremely well then. If if you've got your head around in, uh, German and Danish, and um, you've climbed the old greasy pole to get to where you are, and uh, yeah, well done. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Yeah, it's the well, thing about climbing couple... the pole. Yeah, I'm used to slipping down it and not climbing up it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. how many years you've been in Germany then? Um, well, I I left in November. I left in after we got back from the first Gulf. I left in November '91. We're officially uh, officially January '92. Uh, I was out. After my That's previous so it was officially officially Jan '92, <coughs> uh, and I've been here since. Hmm. So you left when we were in Sella, yeah. And I, I've been on the fire brigade since '93. So uh, yeah. That's pretty yeah. good going. Well, Tim, yeah, it's thanks. just a pity. It's just. It's just a big pity that uh, my pension time for the British military didn't count on the German fiber yet, like it does in the English one, because I'd have been a pensioner by now. You know, yeah. uh, uh, in that case, I've got to work up to 65 at least, which just gives me another two years. So, you know. Ouch. Some you win, some you lose, don't you? Absolutely. Anyway, Tim, I'm going to drop me down now. Um, I'm just going to do a quick bit of housekeeping, and then we'll bring you all back in in a minute. So there you go. Um, that's the perspective from the German side of life. So German firefighters, German um, emergency services are well catered for looking after their mental health. Um, 
Not sure we're quite there yet. We'll find out. I'll see if I can get some uh, some emergency services on from this country uh, for another time. That might be one for later on. We'll look at that. Anyway, for the time being, um, there's a few people watching, so if you haven't clicked that uh, the like button, please, please do that. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you can do that. It doesn't cost anything. Really doesn't cost anything, but it just helps us out. Put questions in the, the chat box. I can see a couple of people already. Um, thanks, Richard and Catherine, for, for clicking the old like button. That's much, much appreciated. And uh, I think you put some comments in the, the chat box as well. So thank you for that. Now, what we've got coming up... Um, by the way, this is coming live from the Hill Manor. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. Um, the archaeological special is coming up next week. Uh, got the archaeologist coming on. Um, we're all disappointed because we didn't, but now they're coming back next week. So if you've got some questions about archaeology and uh, you want to ask them, you know where to be, 7 o'clock next Thursday. The week after, hopefully it's going to come off but it's going to involve animals. The following week is going to be, I think at the moment, a Q&A. <laughs> so we'll have a fun evening on that. Uh, the following week, I'm working on a little project. Hopefully that will come off and that will be a good one. Um, and then the 3rd of November, as we're starting to go into the remembrance uh, time of life, uh, time of the year, I've got a couple of American fighter pilots coming on. Top Gun pilots, one's actual, actual, real life Top Gun pilot, um, and apparently it's not like you see on the film. <laughs> um, you can support the show by buying me a coffee. That would be ever so nice. Um, what else have we got going on? So next Tuesday, make a note in your diary because there's nothing on the telly. We're going to have a bit of a quiz. We're going to have some fun facts. We're going to do a, a channel review, um, and that's going to be with myself and a young Keith. Uh, we're going to co-host, and we're going to have a bit of fun. Nine o'clock uh, for an hour. That's all we're going to do, just an hour, have some fun, um, just to lighten things up a little bit. The Tim Heal Thirsty Thursday live stream from 7 until 9 weekly.